Welcome back. The topic we're discussing today is a second generation religion in Japan with uh, ex, ex Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witness speaking out. Um, this goes back to, uh, we ran some videos a while back on what's going on in Japan with the second generation. And it's really, uh, when you think of it, an advanced way of researching religion for a government. Now, in this case, uh, what spurred this on, and it seems like tragedy spurs all these things on, is a religion. And it was the Unification uh, Church that uh, shot, one of the members shot the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister, let's just take a peek at this here, um, was... Uh, Shinzo Abe, and this is not too long ago. This was July 8th, 2022, just a little over a year ago. So these guys went hard into it, and they, uh, what, what this, the scoop was is this Yamagami, uh, he was the one that, did, that shot the, pri the Prime Minister, and he told them that he shot Abe in relation to a grudge he held against the Unification Church to which Abe and his family had political ties over his mother's bankruptcy. So the, the, anybody that was in working in the government that belonged to this church, they had to either leave the church or they were removed from their position in the government. And that was one of the first things that happened. The second thing is, is they opened up this discussion and they wanted to start looking into the, the religion. So they went to the second generation the children, you know, the ex-members, and the, they started to hear reports. And as this opened up, well, you know what? The Jehovah's Witnesses have the same type of religion. In fact, if you look at it now, they're actually shooting for people's estates. They're pulling, they're, they're taking the property, let's say in Japan. At one time, the Japan people owned the branch and owned the kingdom halls. But now, all of those land titles got transferred to New York. You know, so this starts to make governments wonder what's going on with this religion, money, control, and real estate. And now they're going after their members for more money. So we're looking in, this is something I think that has to happen all over the earth. And it is, it's happening in Norway, just in different ways. Norway is looking at the Jehovah's Witnesses are saying they're no longer classified as a charity. We can't, not for their shunning and their policies. And it's happening in New Zealand in a different way, abuse and care. So Jehovah's Witnesses don't want to be a part of that. You know, they say they don't look after children. So now they're called, the Supreme Court says, nope, you have to be part of it. You want to be a charity. You want to be a religion. So now we'll see what happens next. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are at court with New Zealand, at court with Norway, uh, let's see what goes on in Japan here. We're going to get right into the story. So this is quite a long story. I'm going to put a link to it. We're going to cover parts of it. Uh, so it talks about the issue of second generation religion. It's come to the attention of the society since this prime minister was shot. And, um, it, you know, they're looking for clues, right? So what do you do? You go to the, the children of the religion. You can find the clues as to what makes this religion work because these religions are so big and they're so involved with so much real estate and they're getting into the politics now <clears throat> that smart governments are actually doing reviews and looking at religion in general so this is really interesting uh, to a lot of us on this this side of the fence so since the shooting incident, uh, the existence of religious second generation has received a lot of attention. Several experts defined it as a generation of children who grew up with parents of a particular faith and were influenced by their teachings. In fact, long before the incident occurred, various people from various religious religions and sects were calling themselves religious second generation on social media and complaining about their suffering. Remind you of anything? It sounds like our XJW community. 
And for the past five years, we have been listening to and interviewing the voices of second generation religious people. So uh, this goes on to uh, do an interview of some within the uh, Unification Church. And I'm going to skip forward uh, as we get to the, um, the Jehovah's Witness ones. But a lot of the stuff is the same, uh, you know, when we read the testimonials. And um, so this uh, lady here that's conducting the, a lot of these seminars, however you say her name, she says, even if you look at the news, the words mind control and brainwashing are being thrown around a lot. So do you keep your distance from the church and live as a victim? Or do you affirm the church and your parents and say you are being mind controlled? I felt like I had no choice but to live my life while continuing to suffer. I am not a victim of the church or my parents. I, I chose that. So this is one of the victims that was given her testimonial in this group. Now, uh, I'm going to go all the way down to the, uh, the middle. There's a lot of uh, different testimonials here. And we're going to get into the, uh, the Jehovah's Witness one right here. But I wanted to, uh, first of all, show you what the outcome of the uh, Unification Church was, what they decided. So the, just getting back, yes, uh, this one fellow says, yes, the role of religion is to make people happy. I want to make sure that even one person does not suffer. There's definitely something the church can do, so we will continue to explore more. We should listen to more people who have left the church. And you see, folks, that's what's happening. People are listening to the XJWs. So uh, he goes on to say, he says, what is religion for? Words were exchanged that went beyond I believe and I don't believe and went back to the basics. So a request for a dissolution order was then filed. October 13th, one month after the dialogue, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology has decided to request an order to disband the former Unification Church. And the court will now decide whether to issue an order after hearing arguments from both the state and the religious organization. And it goes on to say, if a delusion order is confirmed after a trial, the religious organization will be stripped of its religious legal status. But as a religious organization, it will not be prohibited from conducting religious activities, such as missionary work and donations. As long as the cult exists, the faith of believers will continue. And really that sets the precedent for what can happen to Jehovah's Witnesses here in Japan. Uh, this is what's happening to the Unification Church. So they're being stripped of their legal status. And that's what's happening in Norway. It's being fought. We have a petition here in Canada to have the same thing done. If you look uh, in my descriptions in the email and you scroll quite a ways down, you'll see there's a Canadian petition link. So uh, why? Well, when we get out of the religion, we find that it's abusive. It, uh, it's intolerant towards other people's beliefs uh, with the shunning policies and the blood doctrine and the hiding of, of CSA and the shredding of records. There's just so many things. And now they're pushing for more money. They're becoming a religion, a Hollywood religion, more of an evangelical religion where the nine uh, governing body leaders each get up and do a monthly broadcast. And now they're involved in movie movie productions and movie, uh, the makings of movie studios. And they need more money for this, so now they're, they're going after properties, real estates, and anything they can get their hands on. So, of course, we're, we are speaking out on this side of the fence, and that's what's happening in Japan. Now, we're going to look at uh, just, just a little bit of what's going on in Japan. It, it says here the... Um, the symposium Jehovah's Witnesses were discussed as a religious group that received particularly a large number of consultations. And it's a new, it's a new religion that was born in America. It goes on to talk about it. And in Japan, it has been pointed out that the use of corporal punishment 
by parents such as flogging and refusal of blood transfusions to children may constitute child abuse and in March of 2023 the government investigated the facts of the cult. So, uh, yeah. So now uh, we get the testimonials out. Uh, here's one of the second generation testimonials. He called for support for children in distress. Gone is his name and Jehovah's Witnesses. Many children of believers were subjected to corporal punishment by being beaten with whips. But I felt a strong desire to protect what my mother, who was a believer, was doing. In fact, I never talked about this to my father, who was a non-believer. So instead of waiting for my child to send out an SOS, I would like to ask for active involvement at school, I am thinking. So... <clears throat> these are quite the statements. Uh, these are from the second generation people coming out of the religion. Many of them carried on flogging their own children. They leave the religion because you still have the ideologies and the cult programming in your mind. You still carry out what the religion says. I learned this just this past weekend when I had a, an XJW friend. You know, we were out of the religion for 10, 12 years. 15 years maybe in his case, but yet all of that programming is still there. It's just amazing. So there's a real deprogramming process that has to take place. And I think this is coming out in all of these hearings all over the world. Uh, they're realizing that this cult indoctrination is deep and it's going to take several generations to actually remove it from people's minds because it, it was believed so, so deeply. So now uh, we go down the list here. Um, you know, there's uh, different different uh, experiences here. This one fellow gone, he says, there were times when my mother would beat me with a whip and she would cry too. And I had a very strong feeling that if I didn't go the way she wanted, she would probably be sad someday. I wanted to be able to believe what my mother believed. And you see, that's how this programming works. It's just gets into people and gets into the children. And he says, uh, Mr. Gone, now I have had the opportunity to talk to people from my parents' generation and the first generation who raised their children in a religious organization just like my own parents and how they felt about raising their children in a religious organization. I'd like to ask you what it was like because I can no longer ask my mother what it meant to her that she devoted her life to it and why. My parents, ch my parent-child relationship with my mother, and my life will never fall apart. Hmm. So, what are the thoughts of my parents who believed in the religion? What are the thoughts? So, this is what's happening. Everyone wants to know. Uh, this is people are coming out. They're they're waking up. And now they're looking at this and they're saying, "Why did I believe that?" Why did my mom and dad believe that? You know, why, why would they choose death over life, you know, when it comes to a blood transfusion for me as a child? When I, I couldn't make a decision, now I'm out, but thank God I'm, I'm out and I'm alive. But why would they choose that? You see, and these are the questions that are coming out. Uh, why did you decide to be a Jehovah's Witness? So there's many of us online giving our stories and it all looks good at the outset uh, but once you get in you realize it's it's not this paradise that they paint it to be. You realize that once you get in that uh, you slowly start to develop this fear of all the nations around you, this fear that uh, Satan is in control of the, the system of things, which they call the wicked system of things. So if you can imagine this fear sitting in your mind for your whole life, even if you leave the religion, this stuff does not go away. So that's why it's so important to deprogramming uh, with this stuff. So yeah, we're not going to read uh, any, any more of this, but uh, it's quite the study that's going on in Japan. And uh, I think we're getting to the, uh, the bottom of the article here. And I'll just see if there's a concluding comment. 
Okay, so uh, at the Risho University Symposium, which Mr. Gon also attended, participants made various suggestions for living together with second generation religious people. So we're just going to look at, at this quickly here. And uh, this guy is a second generation Jehovah's Witness, uh, Hero, Heroki. I don't know if I said that right. So he's the chairman of the Second Generation Religious Support Center. And uh, it, it says here, gener generation religious people are forced to live in a closed environment with their families and within the religious organization. So it's difficult to interact with the general society. And that's true, because how do you get in and talk to people that are inside the religion? It's very closed off. They're, they're told that the media is from the devil. You know, the, the governing body members say that. So it's no wonder the people are really afraid and it's hard to get in there and talk to them. And he goes on to say, when, when it comes to places, the most common place is school. So at school, for example, there are many stories of, of being rejected or of telling a teacher but not getting any understanding. And then when you become a little more adult, even in the counseling and the psych psychiatry, we are, we're often told that we cannot do things because a religion is involved or we would like to create more opportunities for support organizations like ours to collaborate with professionals. So yeah, you know, it's against my religion. You go to school, the little kids, well, it's against my religion. I can't do Halloween or I can't do Easter. I can't do Christmas. You know, so the poor kids are in the, in the class, uh, sitting in the libraries and they try to make cartoons out of this, uh, the Caleb and Sophie ones to make it look fun. But uh, it's not fun for these kids. It's, it's abuse. Now, a, uh, kids should go and learn and they should be allowed to prosper and learn and make decisions. And there's nothing in the curriculum that's harmful, at least that I've seen. There's more harmful stuff in the Watchtower. Now, a second generation Jehovah's Witness uh, who hosts an offline meeting for people uh, this is this fella here, I'm thinking. Could be this fella here. Yeah, probably this guy there. And he's concerned with the, the diseases. The disease, he says. He says, I think most people study about freedom of religion in school, but I don't think they mention the fact that there is freedom not to believe. I, I think it's almost impossible for a second generation religious child to be able to express his or her own thoughts just by hearing it once. But if you continue to explain it several times when he gets a little older, I think you might be able to realize that you have the freedom not to believe. So, so that's powerful when you can choose that you don't want to believe in anything. It's your choice. It's not your parents' choice. It's not, you know, some elder's choice. No, it's your choice. Now here's another fella. He's a... a clinical psychologist school counselor this guy right here and he says in the wake of the shooting incident all professionals are interested in the issue of second generation religion however it is difficult to connect and there is still no one no one more thing to start so i'm still holding back i think it would be great if everyone concerned could participate in the training sessions for school counselors to lower the barrier to understanding these kinds of problems. And even if you are not an expert, many people, the best thing is to be in the situation where the child trusts you, makes you want, want to talk to them about it. So, so that's hard to get a Jehovah's Witness to talk to a school counselor because they're, they're taught, from infancy, they're taught that that's part of the world. You go to the elders if you have problems. You, you don't go to the school counselor. That's what they're taught. And in fact, I think probably in lots of schools, the children are pulled out uh, sex education and things that they should learn at school when, it, when it's uh, part of the curriculum. So at the end uh, of the symposium, Mr. Gon addressed his fellow sh uh, stakeholders. And he says, for the second generation religious people, I want you to know that you are not alone and that you will definitely find someone to talk to and be friends with. So please don't give up and share your life. And I hope that each person will be able to feel that they are the main character in their own lives. What a nice, nice statement uh, for all of us. All of us 
ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that have left. That's who he's talking to. And I know it's in Japan, but he's, he's talking to us all. And, and I think this is, this is so important that we all have this opportunity to, to really talk about our experience. So as time moves forward, uh, governments, societies are looking further into religion. They're finding out that religion um, has programmed us. And we all walk around. If we're second generation, we're outside of religion. Do we still have the thinking of the religion floating around in our minds? So let's, let's not be afraid to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about our feelings and uh, what's going on inside. And I, th I think the sooner we do that, the sooner we can get outside of our thoughts and experience the real life that we have around us. And then, folks, that's part of living our life with love. It's finding something that you really love in life. Maybe you love fishing. Maybe you love mechanics. Maybe you love gardening. You know, so we find these things in life that we love and, and we focus on them. And we find that love makes more love. That's how it works. And then our life just all of a sudden changes. So folks, until next time, keep living your life with love. Bye for now. Oh, hello. My name is Vern. Join the channel. We cover JW World News and we give you the rest of the story. Today, we're going to the Watchtower, and we have lives on Tuesday nights and Saturdays and an excellent community. So join the channel and watch as we crash into the Watchtower. Here it is, I see it coming. Woo! Join us as we report in on the Watchtower.